Hey everyone, this video is gonna be basic, beginner level, how to operate a backhoe. Now this video is brought to you by Ariat. They reached out and they're sponsoring this content. Without them, we wouldn't be able to provide you this uh, video and these series of videos. So uh, we'll link to some of their product below. But with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so basic controls on a backhoe is what we're gonna go over here. So first thing, as I say with any, I'm not an expert in these. I'm gonna show you kind of what I've learned. Uh, but I just wanna go over the controls. I would say safety, obviously, number one. We've already done the pre-op inspection. Uh, three points of contact, getting in or out of equipment. Okay, first thing, seatbelt, put that on. You'll hear that in every one of my videos. Don't listen to any operators say, don't wear your seatbelt. Uh, you're in a protection system. You only, you gotta be secured to it. You don't wanna throw yourself out of these things if you were to roll it. So after that, uh, we're gonna start this thing. Now we're in a John Deere 310SL. Uh, big shout out to RDO equipment. They actually provided us the backhoe for these videos. Uh, now when we're in it, First thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna, we have a handheld camera, we're trying a little bit something different here. We've had a lot of people say they want to see some of the controls. So if you can't see them there, I'm gonna hold a camera here and try to show you some. So on these, you know, one click turns them on, they're keyless for the John Deere's. And then I hold that to start it. Now, what I'll say, uh, we're gonna go over this John Deere 310. Backhoes are relatively similar, so whether or not we go over this one or another one, they're gonna be pretty similar, so, uh, but we'll go over these controls. Now, first thing you always notice, and again, on these displays, very similar, they cross over from skids. John Deere keeps it pretty consistent, which is what I really like between their different pieces, uh, but we have the parking brake right there. It's gonna always start as on, uh, if we did wanna stop it right there, but ultimately I'm looking, I got the parking brake symbol right there. That means this machine will not go anywhere. Uh, with that on. So that's obviously always really important. Now, when you come into this thing, first thing, this is a steering wheel that you're going to go up and down with. And then if I need to adjust my seat, usually you're going to curl those down. So you have a little better, uh, you know, it's right there in front of you. Now with these uh, backhoes are, I, again, I don't think they're really good at any one thing. They're kind of used for a lot of different purposes, but uh, they're not you know, some people use them in a lot of different areas of different markets, but they're not real popular in the Midwest, uh, but they really are a combination of kind of a front end loader and or an excavator. And I think they don't do either one really well, but the fact that it's one machine does both, it can be handy. So you should know how to operate them. So with that said, I'm gonna go over some of the basic just controls here and I'll use my handheld camera to kind of show you some of these things. Uh, on the control panel, we already kind of went over everything there, at least for the starting. Other button, other stuff that you're not necessarily gonna need here. Um, there's a disconnect for the, if there's a quick attach on them, your hazard lights, your eco is an eco mode it has on them, lighting, uh, auxiliary hydraulics if you were to have it on there. This changes your uh, control pattern, whether you're running ISO or SAE or backhoe controls. Um, I always keep ISO, as people, a lot of people call them cat controls, recommend those. Uh, unlock our auxiliary hydraulics. A lot of these, some of these, this is our ride control. Uh, if you turn that on, it'll make your most smoother ride. Some of these aren't actives, like this one doesn't have an auto, uh, this will be an automatic transmission, but it's not on there um, that way. So, and then you got your menu below that. This is your four wheel drive. Uh, it's a mechanical that turns on the front. Uh, and then you've got wipers and air conditioning controls there. So that's all of there. Uh, then outside on the steering, we're gonna go over our right joystick in a sec. It's a boom and bucket controls. On the steering, you've got lights here, turn signals, and then your shifters over here. Uh, so you got forward, neutral, reverse, and then these are your speed settings on there. Outside of that, you got your foot pedals, two brakes that are basically these, you can flip that little lever up and you can do either a right or a left. So the cool thing about backhoes, if you, a lot of times I'll use it for snow plowing. If you do that, you can disconnect. If you wanna help turn, you just push down the left brake, it would turn that machine to the left. So I can help, but very rarely do I see that used. And then we got our throttle right there on that side. I'm not gonna go over, I'll go over the back controls, the back hoe when we spin the seat around. So we're just gonna go over the front for right now. Now, with that said, our boom and bucket controls. If I pull back on this, it's gonna raise the bucket up. 
Again, very similar. These are gonna be similar to the skid steer, uh, front end loader, any piece like that. So up right there, right hand right, opens the bucket. Right hand left, closes the bucket. And then right hand forward is going to bring it back down. So that's the front. Then my shifter, you know, you can either use, I like to use just either one foot or the other. It depends. Some people do the two feet on it. It really is personal preference. There's no right or wrong on that. Um, but then all we would do, we're going to take the parking brake off. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just doing the front. Uh, we're going to drive over to an area where we just take a few scoops and show you those controls. Then we're going to spin around and show you the backhoe portion. Parking brake off. Shifter. Okay, while I'm driving over, you probably heard in the beginning again, I said this was uh, brought to you by Ariat. Uh, we're relatively new to sponsored content, but as a small channel growing, we can't provide, all this has been provided by ourselves. You know, it, it takes a lot of time, expense for us to do these videos. So Ariat reached out. What I love about them, they didn't want to just get to a marketing video. We kind of pitched them, hey, we'd really like to provide the value with a training video. So um, they sent us some product. You'll see I got area boots on, the hat. They've got amazing product, but more importantly, they were more about supporting uh, the workforce. So they have uh, area boots, work boots. They have a whole line of, I know them for cowboy boots, but I didn't realize how much they do in the side of uh, basically work attire, things like that. So go check them out. Now, when I was driving there, if you saw I was in two, I can flip that speed one way or the other, um, but I can basically, uh, whatever speed you're in, that's, it's gonna automatically start at that lowest speed and it'll work its way. Um, but you generally see us have the D there, that'll flip through automatically on there. But if you're going to scoop, things like that, usually I'm in two is a good uh, indicator there. Now, I am gonna find a spot to scoop over here. Okay, now just to use the front here, and I'm not going to go, we're in a very large gravel pile. Uh, just looking at it, it is, we've had been on this pile before, but you generally want to be careful how tall this, this thing's well above my machine. So I'm going to grab some here at the beginning, but you want to be careful. Any of that stuff, that whole wall can collapse um, onto the machine, so you definitely don't want that. Um, but with this, I'm just going to grab some material right here at the, at the base of it. So if I go in forward here, generally you're just going to lower that all the way down and get your bucket flat. Now the only way you can really tell, and the same as on a wheel loader, I'll kind of show on the camera, if you can see that top line, that matches the bucket angle, at the bottom, the blade angle. So I can't obviously go in like that, but I also, if I have it down too much, I'm actually creating a downward slope. So you can't see the front. So it's really important that you're making sure you're flat to the ground like that. And then all you're doing is you're driving into it, now this is where to get a really full scoop, uh, you're driving in, if you start pulling back in the boom while you're driving in, what you're doing is you're putting downward pressure on the front axle. So that's gonna give you more uh, power to drive into that. So that's why you kinda wanna be pulling both at the same time. It's kind of an up and in, up and in, up and in. So I'm trying to do both to get a really full bucket. And there we go, and then I'm backing up. Watching where you're going. Yeah, and I didn't get super aggressive on this one just because of that large pile in front of me. I really don't want to be manipulating that we, uh, too much. So, and then after that, if I want to dump, let's say same spot, raising it up, you'll see these things kind of have that auto level function. Well, you've seen on other machines that'll kind of curl it away from you, which is good because you don't want to, these won't actually let you curl it over, but raise it up. Once I'm at the base, my tires are at the base, that's where I'm going to be dumping. And a lot of times you can shake that bucket a little bit to make sure you clear everything out. Watch where you're reversing. Again, you've got mirrors on this up above you. I'll bring it down, do it one more time. The key again is trying to be flat to the ground when you're going into that. So as I'm driving, you're trying to also avoid spinning your tires at all. And then backing up with it. Now when you're traveling with these, always being low and tight to the ground. 
You never want to have this up very high. Uh, the higher you, backhoes are extremely top heavy. So if I'm driving around, anything above your hood, this machine is a lot less stable. So this is where it is a lot easier to get in a lot of trouble with a backhoe when you're up high like that. So generally you want to be low and tight to the ground and try not to dump all your material when I'm coming back down. I'm gonna dump that. And then the final piece actually with me actually dumping some of that, I can drop this down. These have a blade that floats just like you've seen in the other equipment. Generally, you can either be flat or have the blade at an angle. I'm gonna to go to an angle here. If I set it down there and if I take this right joystick and just push all the forward, it locks forward, and then I'm going in reverse. And you'll see, I can see behind, and I'll use the camera here because it's tough to see off the side. I can see basically right behind the blade there. And it'll kind of float the blade, I'll go right through that. And then at the end of that, I'm just, instead of just pulling straight back on that right hand, I'm slowly raising it so I don't leave a big pile of dirt. And then there we go, and then curl it back in. Okay, we're going to go back over to our side so I can show you the back of the machine. So again, I can shift on the fly on these, so some will have a transmission, an older backhoe will. These all are, you know, shift on the fly so I can flip it to three right there and it'll go faster. Pretty obvious. Okay, so first thing, we put it in neutral. Uh, I'm gonna set that bucket flat on the ground. Now, generally, I recommend flat or just barely touching it. When I turn, spin around, I'm actually gonna raise up the back end. It's gonna put a little downward pressure. The other option, if you're in really soft area, you got concerns about being pulled, and some people will just do this anyways. I don't think this is right or wrong, but some people will actually drive in, spin that open, and do it like that, because it actually puts the blade into the ground. Uh, not, again, I don't generally will do that unless I'm afraid I'm gonna get pulled, but usually just flat's fine. Set it down flat, like that. Okay, I'm in neutral. Uh, I generally recommend putting the parking brake on. We'll go over some in the next video we'll talk about uh, if you leave it in neutral. I can kind of push your machine, but I'm gonna put it in park right now, and then I'm good to go. Then flipping that steering wheel out of the way, and then there is a little lever right here. That's how I'm gonna flip around. So I'm gonna flip this around, and we're gonna move our cameras around so we can see the back of the machine. Okay, now spinning around. So the backhoe control is on the back. Um, again, it's basically it's an excavator arm. So if you know how to run, uh, again, we're gonna do standard ISO controls. And I'll go over that in a moment. Typically, uh, these are pilot controls, meaning they'll pull back to me. So a lot of the newer machines will have that. Some will have levers in the front that are st old school backhoe controls. I shouldn't say old school, because a lot of people use them that. Uh, the newer machines will have this because it also changes the pattern. So you generally, what you'll do is you pull these back to you. So that, once I pull those back, I can't activate them any other way. And there's a switch then, and I'm going to show you right here on the John Deere that's an unlock switch. Now, before you do that, we're going to drop our jack. So you'll see there's basically two right there. Um, so if I push these forward, they're going to bring them. You can bring them both down at the same time. And you're basically going until you feel a little bit of downward pressure. And then you're just trying to, I don't, you know, getting the wheels off the ground, just a hair is good or fine. Some people will keep the wheels on the ground really up to you. Um, what you don't want to do is keep, so I don't want to keep jacking this thing up. The higher I go, the higher my center of gravity. So you just want to be firm on the ground, but you don't want to be all the way as high as you can go. And that also will push my front end in the ground a little bit there. Now, after that, again, I've got my, to unlock my controls there, I click that and I can actually see once I do that on my control that I've got my joystick activated and then I've got my manual throttle here. So usually you're gonna to wanna to ramp up your throttle a little bit when you're doing that. So, and then you've got your boom lock on these. So you're, when you're, whenever you're traveling, you want these boom locked. So with that, uh, this lever in the center here is our boom lock lever right there. So you'll see, I gotta pull back on my right hand to pull pressure, and you'll see that little thing pop up there. 
And I'll do that. Now, outside of that, I'm now I'm unlocked. Now with this, the controls right is your boom and bucket, left is your stick and swing. Now I'm gonna extend this away from you first. So this is your sting or di uh, uh, stick or dipper, some people call it, in and out like that. Just like a standard, I'm in ISO, standard excavator controls. And then left and right is my swing, one way or the other, like that. And then my right joystick is boom and bucket. So if I go forward, I'm gonna bring the boom down, pull back, bring the boom up. No different than a standard excavator ISO controls. Right is open the bucket, left is close the bucket. So standard controls there. The, uh, this is, an, they call it an extend a hoe, basically makes that stick longer. Um, with that, I'm gonna show you this foot pedal down here. So right there is how I'm gonna extend that. So if I push that forward, extend out, push back on that. Oh, hey, cool area boots right there. Didn't even mean to get that in, but that's, there you go. They are pretty, I got some cool boots from them. I love their, actually, their work boots are amazing. So, um, so that's all the controls there. Now to dig a hole, I am just gonna extend out. Generally, I'm gonna extend that thing as far as it'll go. So I'm gonna reach out. I kind of look at that extend hoe as really being used more for transport because I can dig all the way almost right up to me. So you might as well go with your max reach. Now, here's the biggest challenge with the backhoe. If you're trenching, you generally want to do it in line because you're going to try and push your machine forward. But you'll see it's really difficult to see my bucket unless I go left or right to see that thing. But all I'm doing is going down and then you're basically shaving, slicing off a corner here. So this is where I'm pulling in, curling the bucket. You want to try and get those teeth horizontal to slice through the ground there. Now, new operators, I know you've seen me say this, don't worry about doing multiple motions at once. Just get used to the control. So I'm gonna raise this up. Usually you wanna go over two feet or so from your pile or from your trench to dump and I'm gonna open. For a new operator, if you're just training, sometimes the easiest thing to do, and this is not how you'll do when you're, actually, when you're doing this regularly, go down one hand and one motion at a time. Right hand right, right hand left, right hand back. Now again, I know you're not gonna do that mainly because if there's utilities, you always wanna dig in layers. However, if you're brand new to this, I just want you to learn the controls. I don't want you to get overwhelmed with doing multiple motions. And then my left dumps it. You'll see, again, the proper way then is all I'm doing. You'll see how these things shake. That's the, again, they're not great at any one thing. So, but I can shave layers off here. And I'm just trying to get maybe six inches off the ground. Not a beautiful trench, we'll go over trenching in the next video. But again, showing you the, basically I have them all the way extended with the extend hoe. I can pull it up to get a little bit closer, but it also, trying to manage your foot control and doing all that same, it's fairly challenging. So, that's how to use those controls. Finally, backfilling with a, with a backhoe. Again, if you can scrape up just a little bit without creating a new hole, kind of drag it over. They don't necessarily recommend using this. So if I go like this and use the side of this bucket, not great for the machine. Uh, it's not designed to go laterally, but if you're just talking about finished grade, sometimes you can just slide through that and it'll get it kind of back to grade there. So base controls there. Now the key here to finish with this back is retracting it all the way. You have to have that all the way in before you can travel with this thing. And then you're just pulling this bucket, curling it all the way, pulling the stick all the way in. Unless if you have a quick attach, you might have issues with curling it all the way in, but not usually. Um, but just be careful. If you know you're too close to that thing, you might scrape it. And then always storing that thing, again, locking it. So I'm pulling that up. Before I come all the way, I'm gonna, and you'll see the John Deere there. I have to go down a little bit. Pulling back on that to go up. So you'll see that little lever came up. And then pulling back on the right, dropping it in. Once you're dropped in, just go down like that to lock it in. Now, this is travel mode, straight in line. I highly recommend that. Some people, if you try and go sideways like this, you're just moving your center of gravity over. It makes no sense to do it. It makes you shorter, um, but it's actually less stable. So generally, you want to be in line. This is transport mode. And then when you're done there, all you're doing is pulling your jacks gently down. Pull them all the way up. I do recommend at the end, be careful. If you have dirt on there, sometimes I've slammed these things so hard. And then there we go. And then from there, turning throttle down, you can push these away from you. We'll lock them out. I saw actually the symbol. I'll see the lockout go there, and then I can spin them back around. 
So for this, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to park the machine and get on out. Okay, everyone, so those are basic controls for a backhoe. Again, if you have, I always say this to everyone, if you're an operator, use these all the time. Share your tips or tricks in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. Finally, again, big shout out and thanks to Ariat. Uh, this video would not have happened without Ariat. So please, we'll put a link below. That's the way you can help support us is go check out the sponsor that helped put this together. Again, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>